Crusader Kings 3 playing as Ukraine or Kiev right now until we make our own kingdom. So things were big in the last one. We subjugated that kingdom and then took a little bit of land up there in the northwest as well. see it up here from outer space so that's pretty cool and also this is the last um, video hopefully where I'm having to re-record the audio over the gameplay I should be back on track after this um, I think I updated OBS and uh, right before recording these three and it forgot what my right mic input was <laughs> and I guess didn't record anything so but yeah I realized in the last one I didn't really you know I was focused on all the wars going on so didn't really acknowledge it enough but yeah it sucks that his wife and best friend uh, for the entire game I'm pretty sure she, they were married when we started um, passed away in childbirth last episode, so that sucks, um, obviously it would be hard for him to replace her, but for the sake of our little almost kingdom here, we will need to, so I think the focus of this one will be, you know, just showing off that we got the Defender of Rod, which is pretty cool. Last time, look how many green buffs he has, too. He had, like, two full rows. It's wild. He has so many. But, uh, you know, we made a lot of land expansion last episode. And this one's going to be focused on solidifying that. Um, shoring up some alliances and marriages. In the face of losing a wife there and our heir. as well. So we still have a number of factions. Um, a populist one from a few places, uh, an independence one of the territory that we subjugated, as well as that one that voluntarily became our vassal. I don't know why he's trying to do that. He's at 0% discontent. He likes us, actually. But, um... He wants to claim the Tarofian throne for himself. No. Um, yeah, I didn't even ask him. Like, I was buttering him up, swaying him. But he came to us and said, I'll be your vassal. And I just said, okay. So I don't know why his first action was to try to seize one of the duchies for himself with the support of no one. So we do have that guy as our steward now who was you know, the leader of that kingdom to the south. Or that duchy to the south, whatever it was. And we're just missing a little bit of renown there, but not too far off. And, you know, our leader's pretty young still, so we're not in a rush to make a kingdom, because that'll kind of lock us into those borders. So. We should try to push that for as long as we can um, towards the end of his reign and then, you know, act quickly and solidify a kingdom, create the Ukrainian borders. So we got to explore some options here. So I did a little bit in the last video and I thought it was pretty cool now that you can the log of memories for people and kind of see what what they've done, what's happened to them, what's kind of shaped their character throughout the game. So that's pretty awesome. A 
lots of battles and lots of Viking relatives have died in battle over the course of the last few videos. Damn, there was losing my best friend and wife. That's a sad entry on that list. But let's see. So, like I think I said before, I like to go in with high stewardship. So, um, it boosts the number of uh, domains you can personally have. realm. So, I mean, that could be an option that has 16 and uh, a positive congenital trait, which is good. You always want to try to be collecting those. I haven't usually focused on getting those, and it's been more happenstance, but there are, you know, styles of play where you focus on getting as many of those p being passed down. So high stewardship would be good. Just looking at some different that's a clan hammer. Well, that's kind of cool. They have just one little island there. But um, that's Norse, and we're kind of not Norse anymore. We spell, still speak Norse, or at least my faction leader does. But it's obviously Russian now. That's the one we were looking at earlier. But yeah, see all those different cultural and language barriers lead to negative 34. There's Stanislava Valetti uh, from the House of Valetti. Husband was slain in battle. She became rivals with someone. Interesting. So, I've noticed that usually the ones with like super high of any given stat are generally not from a house or have, you know, any potential alliances or claims. You have to get down to quite a ways in the list and somewhere around 12 and 13 is where people are sitting at. So this Maria one uh, is an interesting one. Pretty solid stats across the board. Uh, 13 stewardship is not bad. Uh, she had a few kids. Or she had a rival who died. Husband's dead. Um, 36, which I think my guy right now is 38. So... Uh, close and there is not a too substantial of alliance but there is one there so that's an interesting choice I think for what I'm looking for for my what makes sense for my guy right now for faction leader because for high stewardship there's not really that doom and she comes with a cat so that's just a nice little added bonus there but we'll explore some other options here, but I think that seems the best. If we're going purely off of stewardship, we can marry, you know, it's good to marry someone who's compatible and will support you and has good skills and things for your primary player people, and then some of your other ones you can, you know, marry off a little bit more strategically. We have the benefit here. I think we're in a pretty solid position, so we don't have to be, you know, angling. 
too hard to uh, get ahead here. So, she's just a Smolensk, which kind of tiny little kingdom over there. So, the fact that we get an extramarital affair or something. So, I think we just forgave him of that, pardoned him. That's our son, yeah, half Dan. And this actually is a really good match. Like, he's pretty young. He's 14, so not the age difference isn't too much. They can get betrothed. And uh, look at that 5,187. I don't know why they're so strong in Grodno. It looks like they only have, like, maybe at max two to three provinces. But, uh, and here's his younger brother. We can find him. So seemingly that one seems like a decent match, but it's like a vassal of that big empire to our, well, look at the, the headdress on the, the Hungarian king. That queen is cool looking. I haven't seen that before. Um, but the reason I wasn't interested in that one is if we go to war with Kasaria, then I think the vassals obligated, you know, that to side with them. So it wouldn't help us out. They can't, uh, I don't think they can defy their liege like that. closed it out. I thought I didn't do it, but it looked like I was hovering over the button. If we had the original audio, we would know better. Yeah, I had that err. I know we're at 95 favor, or opinion, and we're still not getting the max troops from her, which is weird. I mean, it's only like 15 people, but odd. See, and that boosted us up from five to seven domains uh, that we can have. So now we only have to give away one. That's gone down a little bit there. It was probably like, you know, 50% of what's not filled into the line was filled in previously. I'm going to take a risk and try to get him to convert it, even though I know it would piss them off. It doesn't work. See, this one's 85%. And then, even that one doesn't work. Surprisingly. And, you know, the other option would stress us out, and we're already pretty stressed, so... I just take a shot on all of them. That one's 13%, so it's not worth even trying, but I'm surprised the 85% one did not work. So, that's unfortunate, but we're in Iron Man mode, so we'll just roll with it. And we became the head of the Avsigurd dynasty. Somebody's raiding us. Made a terrible mistake. We're actually pretty close this time. It was the Chervin cities that did that. And I just realized that from last video that he only has four diplomacy, which is really bad. I guess we're going to have to figure something out here, because... You know, you could accidentally give someone a claim or all sorts of but terrible things as a chancellor. I think having a low-skilled spy master 
is usually the least detrimental, I've found. You could have secrets revealed and whatnot, or not catch a spy or an assassin, but it generally happens less. So we're going to do a, a swap, get it at least up to six. that guy. Alright, there we go. Teach him to rate us, right? is taken prisoner somewhere in the world. The secret her family has just spread all across the world, so it's hard to... It could be England or France or anywhere in Scandinavia or Eastern Europe. With going the make-your-own-kingdom right route, it is kind of cool cause, and freeing, because just keep expanding and bridge across all these. Now that guy's actually pretty close to va offering vassalage. We could, you know, negotiate with them a little bit more. And possibly get them, and they're pretty big. And we would get, I'd like to get Lviv, Lviv, one of those, probably the second one, into our kingdom. Just because that's a name I recognize. It's always cool. I think we can make that happen. And this guy attacked us, so I was like, all right, let's go on and conquer him now. If he's going to be like that. And we already had our uh, rally point set up. And again, I didn't check the, <laughs> what allies they had. I swear one day I'll get better about that. I just look at like their numbers and I'm like, alright, I can take that. But, you know, that can have a big difference. I think I just remembered that I need to give away one of the territories. And I think it has to be either in Kiev or that one up there. Those are the two I chiefdoms that I have. What is that? Peresopanitsia. Peresopanitsia. Something like that. Or Peresopanitsia. Somewhere. Something like that, I don't know. <laughs> Which one do I give? I forget. See, I'm comparing those my two. I do have three I chiefdoms, over, one over that. But uh, I don't directly own that, so I'm going to go ahead and give that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give that to my son. Cause any trouble. Knock on wood. Alright. They're sending in an extra thousand. That shouldn't make a difference unless they miraculously spawn another army of 700 like that last kingdom did. So we're in pretty good shape here, so I'm going to try and split people off to, uh, the siege. Sometimes I get lucky and then, you know, if you have enough to keep their main army at bay and just keep making progress, that can be very nice. 
I think on the one I sent the wrong army away. Uh, on the one I'll notice later. But I sent the 765 strong one. Yeah, I just noticed there. armies is still running away in this 170. Couldn't get away from us in time. And we got called into another war by our ally. He's helped us out twice, so we owe him. Um, it's a civil war. One of his, you know, his kingdom is trying to fracture in half against the tyranny of him, but Seems like a chill dude, at least to us. But yeah, I'm worried about that retreating army. Sometimes they just form up like right next to your army and that can be bad news. I'm gonna send the little army over just to, just in case. I'm not even sure what hook expired or when we got that, but I think it might have said our wife was pregnant. Alright, we just gotta keep that allied army at bay. The main army is too small to do too much. Some kind of war going on in Pinsk right now. I'm gonna join those two up. Some prisoners too. And look at this maximum perk bonus reached. I've never gotten that before, but we've reached some kind of limit on something. It doesn't say exactly what. So we got a couple prisoners. They're not worth anything really, so. Worry about them just yet. But here we go, find another battle there. Yalmar was maimed, that's not good. And Stanislav was wounded. Stanislav is our friend. Who is formerly the steward and then the chancellor and then I think he might be the spy master now but uh, there we go we won that war probably didn't need to fight that battle and get Stanislav wounded but you never know what's going to happen I'm just trying to end it quickly so we can get ourselves down we're still over the domain limit cap which does come with a I think an opinion deficit, and sometimes buildings don't work. So this one, I'm going to give it to uh, Stanislav. He lost an eye, it looks like, for our kingdom there fighting up in Pinsk. So I think it was fitting to give him one. Then I'm going to go ahead and give our heir one, two. I don't know the best practice on that, but I have noticed in um, succession rules where you have an election, if you're the person you're voting for, like usually your primary heir, um, doesn't have land, that counts as a negative uh, perception of other people voting. Alright, we're going to go ahead and create that title, give herself a nice little booster or down there too. And we're gonna go try and help out our ally down here. Try to meet up there and cross that land bridge. Our spouse is up to the task. After a long day, I'm complaining to Maria when she interrupts me. Let me do something about it, husband. A few lessons might sharpen their wits. 
so she's going to go and try and help people. And the Chancellor could definitely use it. Our Chancellor's skill is not very good. Um, so she's better than our Chancellor. So I'm definitely going to go with that one. Maybe they can, she can whip them into shape. So our ally just lost that battle. The, the rebels are actually pretty strong. Our Seneschal and Marshal have their work cut out for him trying to bring order to this land after we rapidly expanded. Trying to consolidate these armies a little bit. They're still broken up from besieging. position this. They actually got a really good commander, it looks like, and of course they're in the mountains defending, so it's always a little oh, King Bjorn stole back his position from us, but we'll get it back. We're only getting stronger, and he's only getting older, so we'll get there. sink up my forces, take some of their land, try to get my ally interested in defending his own land. Oh, look at the military power just went up on that populist one. <laughs> but uh, those guys actually seem to like me now, I think back down under the domain limit and I don't know maybe just forgetting about our past war I'm not sure what really flipped them but uh, but that's good we want to avoid that war and that's the closest one the idea to try and learn their language since it'd be good for dealing with those vassals and maybe it's the same language that's spoken in Kazaria. That's what I was hoping. I couldn't see... Oh, he's an empire deer. Yeah, that makes sense. It's so big. Um, I think it was called like ogre or something is the language and it wouldn't tell me what this guy is. Oh, he is Shah's Turkic. Oh, okay, for some reason I was looking over that. They are actually different languages, unfortunately. I was hoping there would be some overlap. Oh, our wife just gained us a nice little 150 renown. We wrestled back the head of the dynasty status. looking good now. It's pretty big. And uh, taking this city, or we're taking that one back actually, but uh, taking the capital will be big. We're losing a little bit of money each month, but not too bad. I think next it'd be really cool to get Alage. Uh, to become our vassal, that would be a big boost in land. How do you think it's pronounced? Like, Alage or something. It has to be, you know, I'm saying it with not a Russian-y accent or at all. So it's our heir and Outer or something is her name. But that's a good alliance to have. We pull in, I was it was like 5k troops or something in that tiny kingdom. I don't know why 
they spawned that little tiny army, but I was worried for it, so I kind of postured myself to defend. Pick a new spot here. I'm going to pick, I usually, unless there's a populist rebellion, pick like the lowest, but, you know, we got some public order issues down here, so I'm going to pick one of these ones. to stop do and we're at 80 percent so if we can hold the territory and if we can take back a little bit more then it should be good my sister saga died that's a little bit more stress getting a little dangerously close there um oh yeah i think i'm well overdue to be able to do a feast but i was in the army so I swap in uh, Stanislav with his eye patch to hold down the fort while I go feast. <laughs> but um, it was necessary. We were getting dangerously close to a life event pushing us over. The stew sea, so the gist of here is there's a cauldron hanging over the fireplace, and he accidentally, I think it's my son too knocks it over and spills it on my wife and causes a, a, a mess here. <laughs> kind of negates our renown gain, yeah, negative 150. But it's a, a boiling cauldron. I'm glad that uh, no one got wounded. So that feast was a success, made that one guy happy enough to, you know, decide not to try to push his claim in Durov anymore. Durov. And we can also do Aunt and clear out that remaining stress. So a little feast, a little Aunt goes a long way. Uh, so we see a boar and let's go after it. Our son's with us. It's a dangerous mix. <laughs> Anybody could get wounded here. But let's go. And we follow into a ravine, and suddenly our son's horse loses its footing and sends him to the ground screaming. It's nothing fatal, but uh, he's in pain. So we can press on and get renown, or just give him a little break, and that's what we're going to do. Her new wife, I got concerned for a second, I thought she might have died, but she's fine, but the, the baby didn't make it. So we are at 100%, so that's going to be wrapping up this war. Yeah, there it is. So we're sitting on, we're, we need to get that gold back up, but we're making 5.1 now. So, gotta get that back up to 300 at least, but we're sitting on a big stockpile of renown now, that's nice. And that guy's at negative 7, so he's very close. If we do a little bit of swaying of him, we might get him to become a vassal as well. You know, we have, our kingdom's pretty tall, we're <laughs> kind of getting close to if we grab some of these other kingdoms to just having a straight kingdom all the way through like the Black Sea to the whatever sea is I don't know I guess it's not the North Sea right whatever 
agencies around by Russia and, uh, and that stuff. Uh, but that'd be cool if we just cut on through to Prussia, but that's not going to happen. Probably. <laughs> that would be cool. money now where uh got some big stockpiles we we're sitting at 4k what would that go up to probably 5k something is our max now of troops uh vassal still like us except that one guy a little bit and uh i should have queued this up before but we're gonna try to start converting uh, these over. That's a very long process though. And we can start. We can buy that. We have a lot of renown and that's, that's very good to be moving in that direction. So get that. I think it was high tribal authority and then the top tier is absolute. I believe. So that dude's kind of old. See what happens when he passes. He does have a son, so we're not free of him. But uh, I don't think a kid could sit on the council, so forget. I think it does. It just leaves it open. And he forfeits his position because it's not guaranteed. Uh, but yeah, we made a lot of progress here. for watching. Uh, thank you for dealing with me having to do a voiceover uh, for all these videos. I think it ended up not being as bad. I thought it might be hard to remember what I was doing and do it, but I think we got the gist of it. Um, but yeah, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.